you guys have seen the vlogs, you've seen the rhetoric talks, and that was always the side of me that has overcome all these crazy things that have happened to me in my life. But I never felt that that was the right medium to talk about some of the bad times, and there were some bad times. So today we went out, went to all these places that I was living or that I was sleeping at the time to go further than to just explain the inspiration behind the song and actually show you exactly where I was and what I was thinking about in my past. Stuck in my room and I don't wanna go outside I can never feel alone with all these thoughts inside my mind so the song starts out with, I walk the line, but I keep on tripping between what I have and what I'm missing. Right here I'm talking about a time in 2014 where I just moved back from LA and found a sublet for like 800 bucks for a room in this random apartment. It was on 100th and Lex, 127 East 100th Street. It was such a low point in my life that I have not come up here <laughs> since I lived here. I was just saying how I haven't been up here in like four years. At this time, I had already gone on a headlining tour with Logic, and I had gone on the Kid Cudi tour. So on Facebook and on Twitter and all the social media and all my friends back home, they thought I was doing so well. Whereas in my real life, I'm trying to live off $6 for every two days. Here it is, Little Caesars. So on 107th and 3rd, I would always walk to this Little Caesars. I'd get the pizza, I'd have one slice as a reward to come back, and then I'd hit that bodega on 103rd and Lex, and get an Arizona mango and a hot and ready. So that's $6. If you have two slices for two meals each day, you drink half the Arizona can the first day, fill it up with water, drink a little bit more, refill it with water and you just make it last for two days. So over the course of two days, you spent $6. So it was this fine line that I kept falling between every day, between trying to feel very thankful for the opportunity that I had and having to face the harsh reality in which I was living at that time. So secondhand, I'm Pip like Charles Dickens. Pip is an orphan in the book, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. When I wrote this song, it was about my great expectations. So that's why I wanted to include Pip from Charles Dickens' novel, Great Expectations. Pip was an orphan, so that's why I said secondhand. I felt like I was moving around and nothing was mine. Um, secondhand, the clock just keeps on ticking. Every single day in that room for the three months that I was there, I felt like the one common pressure on everything was time. Do it while you're young, was what I kept being told. Make sure that you Make it as a DJ before you move on to other things. I felt this pressure of time. So that's why on the cover art, you have the alarm clock. It used to be choking my neck, tying me. It was a noose around my neck, completely killing my morale, killing my career, killing my inspiration, my creativity, my self-esteem. And after I got through that, that's when the cord came loose and the time stopped. So there was no longer a time constraint. And once I let loose, that's when things started to excel. Stuck in my room and I don't want to go outside. I stayed in that room. There was no natural sunlight in that room. There was a huge building across from me. And the way the sun rose in the winter time, it didn't get to there. All it was, was this big building right here. And if you look up, you can see it's this big building. So when the sun would come up, pretty sure I was on the I was on the third floor, so it was that window right there, right beside the stairs, not the fire escape one. So that building was so tall that when the sun would come up, no sun would get in there, no direct sunlight. So it was always, always, always dark. So I would stay in that room, super depressed. I would leave occasionally to go to the studio with my homie Dot, but other than that, I would rather sleep on the train if I stayed out late in East Williamsburg with Dot then go home to my place because it was that depressing. It was a super tiny room with a super tiny window with no light. There were two roommates, it was a couple, they were always arguing, and then there was somebody else that lived in like a closet room. And I would not leave unless I put my ear up to the door and listen to see if anybody was out there. And if they were, I would hold my pee or anything that I had to do until after they had gone back in their rooms and then I would leave. I was legitimately stuck in that room with my thoughts. Nobody talked to each other in the whole apartment. I never 
I still to this day don't know what the other people in that apartment look like. And I was there for like three months. So when I say stuck in my room and I don't want to go outside, I would not go outside at all. I can never feel alone with all these thoughts inside my mind. The original, so when I write, I like to write literally and then go back and figure out what needs to be expounded upon. It was stuck in my room and I don't want to go outside to a roommate I don't know in a place that is not mine. Because that is legitimately how I felt. Please call the doctor because it's Mr. Run and Hide here to take over my life six feet under from my pride. All this confidence that I had built up in college, all this confidence that I had built up on stage and stage presence, it was just deteriorating day by day by day because I didn't interact with people. Honestly, standing here makes me feel like I'm back into it because there are many nights just standing out here against this brick wall, not wanting to be in there. or just walking up into Harlem, walking around, feeling the energy of people because I didn't want to be in that room. Whenever I was in that room, I felt like the walls were caving in. I didn't want to go outside. I felt so low. My self-esteem was zilch. Every day I wake up, wake up, just want to get back in my shell. Reality is calling, block a number on my cell. I just want to move up, move out, have a place all to myself. If anyone can hear me, all I'm saying is, I felt like I had gotten deeper and deeper in my head every single day, that I was separating myself even from friends. Every time a friend would reach out or somebody would try to hang out, anything, ignore them, wouldn't talk, oh, something came up. But no, it was just me staying in my room. I was legitimately blocking out reality. Every day I was in that room, I just wanted to get up and get out and have a place like this and just have somewhere that I felt comfortable to go back and sleep, but I didn't have that. And I felt like I both physically and mentally isolated myself. So I wasn't even sure if people could hear my cry for help. I want a shelter, a roof over my head, a dollar to my name, the air out of my bed. There's no more metaphorical talk at all. This is just straight to the point. Huge production, yelling, energy up. This is what I'm feeling in my head. I'm finally exploding and letting it out. I want a shelter, a place to call my own. No more suitcases zipping up my home. Some time to be alone. I came up with that in the shower at a sublet. I immediately went and recorded it, and I recorded this hook straight through, first take. And I figured, oh, this will be a reference. But there was so much raw emotion <clears throat> from sitting in there and reflecting on that time of my life that I ended up keeping that take. It was supposed to be both times in the hook. I want a shelter, but it ended up having one saying, I wanted shelter. And that was just the raw emotion at the time. But moving on to the second verse, the second verse is back in 2012 when I had this sublet in Lower East Side. I was living off Norfolk and Houston above Remedy Diner. And the other person in the apartment was subletting their apartment too. Granted, this is an apartment where you walk in, the kitchen is right there on the left side is my room and on the right side is their room. There's no living area, nothing, one bathroom. So you figure it's me sleeping on this air mattress in this room and then five other people in this other room. I was working an internship where I wasn't getting paid or I was paying rent out of pocket without earning any money to counterbalance it. Plus eating food every single day. But long story short, by the end of the summer, I had made enough connections that I still wanted to stay. Uh, my sublet had run out. I had no more money to extend the sublet at all. So I decided that I would stay by any means necessary. I knew that the McDonald's down the street on Delancey and Essex was a 24 hour McDonald's. So we're at the McDonald's and we walked all the way here and it's close for a model. That is nuts. Ta-da! Wow, it looks nice now. They're getting a second floor and everything. So I would just come down, flop in there. Nobody cared at this McDonald's. It was one of the only 24 hour McDonald's around. If I didn't have a spot to stay, come in with my suitcase and everything, order number two with the fries and go in the back and just sit. And I still remember, the person that I remember the most was this crazy lady that was talking to herself the whole time. And that was the only time that I was like, dang, what the heck am I doing? Every other time, it just seemed like I was at McDonald's way too late for my own good. And all of a sudden, the sun would rise, I'd get some hash browns, and I'd leave. So, yeah, this is the McDonald's. Completely different now. We'll never be able to go back and see what it was. Order number two with the fries, sleeping in the booth on the side. Exactly what I was doing. Still hungry, but ain't nothing left. I just spent the money to get the bathroom code, let's be honest. Wishing things were just going right. Call my parents, tell a bunch of lies. 
Now, when I was sleeping at McDonald's or sleeping on the train or any other place, I didn't tell anybody. My friends didn't know this, the people I was hanging out with didn't know this until years later. So if they would call, yeah, things are going great. Uh, more opportunities have come up. That's why I'm staying up after my internship. Oh, I love New York City. It's incredible. They would call and I'd just say these white lies. So yeah, it was right here. Right here in the corner. Pop down, sit your stuff right here. Get the lean up like this and you're good to go. It actually wasn't that bad. Out of all the places, this was not that bad. Unless you had a crazy person or somebody puked on the train or it was drunk people out. But usually I was getting on the train by like four in the morning or something after being in a studio with people. So it wasn't that bad. It's heated. But yeah, this is the train. Let's pop off and uh, get back to the lyrics. Can't talk now, my phone die. Low battery on my face, on the streets asking God why. Why am I stuck up on this roller coaster ride? I see everything from here, but can't reach it from the sky. I felt like I was on these ups and downs of life, and I would reach a peak, and I'm riding this roller coaster, and I'm seeing everything. I'm seeing success around me. I've finally made my way into the music industry, but none of it was mine. I felt like I hadn't accomplished anything. I had done great things DJing, but I always had this deep down passion of being an artist and writing songs and creating music. So I felt so empty. I felt like I was at the top and I could see everything, but I couldn't reach it. I throw my arms up even though I cannot fly. On a roller coaster, you throw your hands up because you're having a blast and you're enjoying the ride. But also, you throw your hands up if you're completely done with something. You're done, you quit. And that's how I felt at that moment. It was this line that I was walking between, between throwing my hands up and having fun, or throwing my hands up and being done. Spread imaginary wings and pray to God that I don't try. I just hope that I didn't jump from this top and quit. I didn't know if I had the willpower myself to not quit. Pray to God every day that I was doing the right thing and that I didn't just give it all up. All that to say, one final hug. I want a shelter, a roof over my head, a dollar to my name, the air out of my bed. I want a shelter, a place to call my own, no more suitcases zipping up my home, some time to be alone. And that's what I finally have for filming this in my one bedroom apartment in East Village, in New York City. We're not filming this in a McDonald's, We're not filming this on a train, We're not filming this in a friend's hallway on the hardwood floor, We're not filming this on a bench somewhere in DC or New York City. Filming this in my home, in my shelter, if you will. A place to call my own. No more suitcases, they're put away. The air is out of my bed, my real mattress. And I finally, 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 have some time to be alone and pursue this burning passion that I've had since I was an early teenager. To write songs, put these feelings out, and grow with you, and leave the mark that I've always wanted to leave on this world. I can't wait to put out this first project. I can't wait to move on to other things, more writing opportunities, TV shows, movies, acting, everything. I'm so glad that I finally got over this constraint of time and this constraint of people trying to put you in a box. There's not a thing in this world that fulfills me more and creating something and watching an idea in my head go from just this small random idea into this huge tangible thing in the world. I feel like art is alternate reality treatment. I'm gonna say this a million times. And that's what I want to do with this music, with whatever I create in the future, is I want to create an alternate reality for you to stay in, be inspired by, or sometimes escape to, to help deal with the reality that you're in right now. So if you're a person like me that's stuck in your room and doesn't want to go outside, you can listen to a song like Shelter and see that I've been there too, and now I'm here. And years down the line, I'm gonna look back at this like it was nothing.